What up? What's up? Welcome to Rap Talk, episode 11. That's crazy. Double digits. Yeah. Yeah, and you weren't here to celebrate it. I know, that was very sad. Um, what's new? Like with me? Yeah. Uh, I feel like I say this every week, but lots of, lots of eggs. Um, yeah, just collecting eggs, selling geckos, trying to make room for the new babies. How many eggs you got out? Uh, leopards, probably like 20 to 30. Oh wait, I forget they lay clutches of two. Probably like 40 to 60. Yeah. And yeah. then probably like 15 to 20 crested gecko eggs. Nice. I got a clutch of Pictus gecko eggs today. I'm, dude, I wanted to stop laying eggs so bad. <laughs> Is that the one that looked like they were, like you could see them inside? Was that the Pictus? Yeah. Yeah, those were cool. Yeah. Yeah. You got a bunch of those. Yeah, and I got I got uh, six that hatched out already. Dang. Right. And they're Pet Pet Henry. That's awesome. And there's like a 10 in the incubator. That's awesome. So I'm like, please, <laughs> stop laying eggs, dude. That's great. It'll be great money uh, when you can sell them. Yeah, I, I, there are, some of them are already to size, but I also just want her to like survive and breed another season, you know? So I wish you'd quit. Because I have enough, dude. I have way too. I have enough. There's got to be a way. There's got to be a way to kind of like trick her into it. Yeah, I'm thinking like maybe like I don't know, drop the temperatures a little bit, but I don't, clean the whole closure so it doesn't smell like eggs. Yeah, I, I put the mail in a whole different area of the room, so she didn't, can't even smell them or anything. Song. It's rap talk. It's rap talk. It's Wait. We'll have to uh, look at the time when we say song, and then know. Do you uh, do you want to start with the true or false questions? True or false? What? I don't. Know. <laughs> <laughs> um, true or false? Salamanders have uh, ankle joints. Ankle joints. Wow. Uh, I'd say false. They got pretty, pretty big cankles, from what I recall. That's false. It is. Yeah. They don't. So they just have an arm and fingers, or I, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I know they don't have an ankle joint though. I'd be really curious to see that skeleton. Maybe I'll try and find one. I'll put it on the screen because I imagine it looks weird, <laughs> but I know that frogs have ankle joints and salamanders don't. Yeah, frogs for sure do. Maybe they have like arm cartilage, hand stuck in place, and then fingers? I have no idea. But there's no, like, movement in it? I don't know. Yeah, that'd be cool to see. It's a stump. It's just a stump, yeah, they just don't have feet. All right. Episode 11, I have some things I want to talk about. Oh, wait, do you have a true or false or no? I didn't have no. it. Do you want to hear my reptile joke? Yeah. Why did the gecko call the plumber? I don't know why. Because of a lychee faucet. That was pretty fucking good. <laughs> All right. Um, so after the last episode, there's an update on a dude that was smuggling those reptiles. Got caught last week with 60 animals. Um, but since 2016, it's alleged that he's been imp he's imported uh, 1,700 reptiles. Which is insane, because it's all in his pants. <laughs> yeah. I was telling Trent, someone sent me that, and they're like, how, how the heck did he fit those in his pants? And I'm like, dude, I have no idea. No, okay, so well, I, it's him and his sister. His sister is also charged with conspiracy. And then I heard that he's hired these other guys to do it, too, like cross the border with animals and then paying them according to how risky the trip is. That's crazy. And you said they were taking beaded lizards and stuff? Beaded lizards, dude, yeah. Beaded he's lizards, like, he's like, baby I'll, crocodiles. I'll pay you money to strap this uh, deadly animal to your thigh. Just put it put it tail tail up. Yeah, tail up. <laughs> they also get paid a lot. Yeah, I mean... I mean those beaded lizards are... Even adults are like, what, two grand? Yeah, and, and they bite through leather or whatever. Dude. And they bite through leather, we found out. <laughs> They gotta like tape the mouth shut or something. Yeah. Dude, I'd be sweating the whole time. What if the tape comes off? They had they had multiple species of box turtles too. Is that illegal? I well, I mean it's illegal to Move them. import them across yeah. the border like that. 
From he was doing it from where? Mexico. Uh, Mexico and Hong Kong. Okay, in Hong Kong. I have no to idea. Where? I have no fucking idea. I mean, apparently to El Paso, Texas. Oh, he was taking him over the on the plane. I have I have no idea. He was probably walking him across Mexico to Texas and then fly in to Hong Kong. If he I had was. To guess. They were yeah. They were driving across the border with them in the pants. And then going to wherever he lived in Missouri, but more recently he he moved to Ventura County, California, and he was selling like fucking beaded lizards. Yeah. So if you're in Ventura County, you have a beaded lizard. Oh, who'd you get it from? Yeah. Who'd you get it from? <laughs> that's that's oh, what I was saying. So at this point, he's facing five years for conspiracy, uh, twenty years for every smuggling charge, and there's nine smuggling charges. And then five years for every wildlife trafficking charge, and there's two of those. That's crazy. So that's like that's like two hundred years. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. That sucks. Um, hopefully he's got a good look. Dude, and they were posting videos of them collecting them out of the wild to advertise them on like social that's, media. Like people, people do that when they commit crimes, and I just don't get it. Like you. I, I can't imagine if I saw that on on Instagram, someone like picking up a box turtle, putting it in a bucket, being like, hey, we're going to have these for sale. I'd freak out. I would not be OK. I'd be like, I'll kill you. <laughs> I'd freak out, dude. I'd be like, you have to put those back. Yeah. They do some wild it's so stuff. bad, dude. Yeah, that's exactly what's fucking fucking up the uh, hobby for everybody else. It's like Lacey Act shit is. They, exactly because of this. People like, doing stupid stuff like this upsets everybody, and when everyone's upset and they don't understand, they start making weird laws. 100%. And that affects everybody. Yeah, dude. Um, so, so how do I segue into this next topic? Just go for it. Just go for it. All right, we're just going to go for it. So, you guys know about the Everglades, the pythons in the Everglades. You know about the pythons in the Everglades. The like, they're not going to talk to me. Yeah. <laughs> The Burmese pythons, yeah. Yeah, pretty fucking bad, dude. So, um, in like 1990, people were people were releasing them. But what actually happened is um, Hurricane Andrew destroyed this uh, Burmese python breeding facility. And then, like, hundreds of yeah. Burmese pythons were released into the Florida Everglades. And since then, like, the population's estimated to be between, like, 30 to... 300,000 yeah, pythons. I'm sure it's closer to 300,000. Yeah, because it's like uh, one and a half million acres of their perfect habitat. Exactly. They're going to, they're, I mean, they're, they're, they're thriving for a reason. Because there's zero fucking native uh, predators. There's near, zero natural predators to the Burmese pythons. Even where they're native to, like the only things that eat them are like Burma. crocodiles and maybe people. Yeah. So, like, it, it was hella bad. It's been really bad for a long time. Like last year, they every year they do a Florida Python Challenge where people will go out and collect pythons. Um, the government pays people to bring fucking dead snakes to them. And I think in a, it was like a couple months, they uh, there was over like 1,500 snakes were brought in in over a month or two months. It's a fucking crazy, really out of hand problem. Um, and then recently they banned... Didn't they ban Burmese pythons in Florida recently? I'm pretty sure they did. Yeah. I think you're right. And then, so they banned all those like iguanas and Burmese pythons, tegus. Um, And now for the first time uh, recorded in history, a bobcat was eating Burmese python eggs. And so that means that now they finally have a natural predator. Um, And if the ball, or the ball pythons... The bobcats continue to eat the freaking uh, Burmese python pythons. eggs. Yeah, I mean, because the, the Burmese pythons, they grow up and they eat bobcats. Oh, for sure. Right. So if the bobcats are eating the Burmese python eggs, that'll result in a higher population of bobcats that are going to eat more Burmese python eggs. Yeah, hopefully it wasn't just the one. Hopefully he goes back and uh, teaches Yeah, so the thing is, he also, he, it was filmed. The whole thing is filmed. It's, it's on a camera. That's what it means yeah. when it's filmed. But this dude... Um, not this dude, this bobcat went and found these eggs and ate them and then left, comes back later to get the eggs again. And the snake was there, kind of fought this, the bobcat off. But um, it's like a depredation tactic for the uh, bobcats. 
So I, it's it's a good sign. It, it's um good news for Florida Everglades and Python keepers in Florida. Yeah, yeah, those have been a. I can't think of a species that's more invasive than the berms in Florida. Yeah, it's, it's like more of a nuisance to like everything. Because there's like chameleons and shit down there. Right. But berms. Yeah, that's what that's what you'll see the most of, honestly. That's yeah. what people are going out catching most of. Eating people's dogs and stuff. Yeah, dude. Eating people's reptiles. Um, so the biggest native snake in the continent, because the, the Burmese python isn't native, but it right. is the biggest snake in the continent. Yes. Is it? Yeah, because the only thing bigger than a berm is a, uh, a retic. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. I just, I just made that fact up. I was like, <laughs> let me say this on the podcast. Right when you said it, I was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And you're like, I'm like, fuck, I don't know. Because I wanted to segue into the next topic somehow. Yeah. I'm like, yeah, big snake, big snake. So uh, another big snake, Eastern Indigo, they found one in Alabama on the 16th. You know what that means, James? Yeah means that the population is coming back because for a long time, the population of Eastern Indigo snakes in their natural habitat in Alabama was like declining, diminishing. Um, and then in 2006, they made this program where they would breed the snakes in captivity and then release them into the wild in order to like rehabilitate the, the natural population of Eastern Indigos because they're important for the natural order of everything. Like, ecosystem yeah dude imagine if you don't have a snake eating another snake then you just got the fuck is that sound it's your take you freak me out dude <laughs> yeah i mean and, and and they have they have like a two mile radius of like where they would go in one day what are we talking about indigos yeah yeah so like <laughs> If you, unless you have this huge area of land, like, of course they're going to diminish. Like, you put suburbs everywhere, like, of course they're going to diminish. Right. They're like, it's like, it's like a big cat. And you just, like, put houses everywhere. It's not going to be able to, like, well, find other big cats. So they have fight, this, they have this, uh, Konica National Forest area, which is where they're from and where they want them to be. Um, I remember last or two years ago, they found one after, like, 60 years, almost 60 years, they hadn't found any wild eastern indigos in their natural habitat. And so finally, after they released 170 snakes, one snake popped up that was a result of the natural reproduction of those snakes that they that they um, released, which is a big step. But <laughs> a whole two years later, they finally found another one. It makes you wonder if, like, yeah, because there's no space. It's like, do they release them and they're all just like getting eaten by something bigger or like what what or or do they think one's enough? Do they think oh yeah that's average? I think I think it's pro it's good progress because before there was none. Yeah. So now they found two in yeah. the last like two years. But I mean, if I threw a bunch of like geckos on the ground and I was like, oh a gecko, of course. You know what? Does that make sense? What do you mean? Like, like if there's no geckos and I throw a bunch on the ground and I pick one up, I'm like, oh I found a gecko. No, okay, so they're finding snakes that are that they haven't released yet. Oh, not theirs. Yeah, so they gotcha. so they're finding snakes that are. Uh, are they tracking? Are they being tracked? Somehow, because they're they're, the snakes that they found were product of the snakes that they released. So like they release those snakes, they bred in the wild, and then they have oh. babies, and they're finding the babies. That right, is really good actually. Yeah. Okay. So it is a big step. Hey guys, welcome to the ad. Because we have to do an ad sometimes. And you know how it goes when you have a show. Or you want to... You know what it's like to run a business. So don't look at me like you don't want to hear the ad. And don't skip it because I would have... I want you guys to hear it. And I want you guys to like it. And I want you guys to go where I'm telling you to go. Because then you'll see me there. This show is sponsored by Central Valley Reptile Expo. We're having a party, dude. It's going to be a party called the Central Valley Reptile Expo. If, you don't, if you're not at the reptile show, I'm gonna think that you haven't been watching the show and I'm gonna take it personally. On June 4th, it's gonna be 10 to five. On, 10, on June, June 5th, it's gonna be 10 to four. 
that's a little bit confusing, but it's just like the backwards numbers. Um, it's going to be dope, dude. You're going to miss out if you don't go. I'm telling you right now because I'm going to be there and I'm going to bring something you've never seen before. I'm going to bring something so crazy that if you don't come, you're going to be you're going to probably cry. And it's going to be something really cool that I, I can't even say it on the show because it's if I say it on the show, too many people are going to show up. Just come to the show. Just come, please. Please come to the Central Valley Reptile Expo. There's going to be breeders from literally all across the, I might even say the world. Breeders from all across the world. No, I don't. I, I think that was a lie. I, I do know that there's going to be breeders from all across the U.S. though. Anything you need, you get at the show for cheaper than you can get it at the fucking reptile shop. Um, I've always wanted some. Yeah. They're, but they're so expensive. Yeah. Yeah. Um, another animal that is also on the brink of extinction. Oh, let me guess. The water bear. <laughs> no. Is it the Galapagos tortoise? It's a subspecies of the Galapagos tortoise called the giant Fernandina tortoise, uh, native to the Fernandina Island, which is formed by a volcano. Which is part of the Galapagos? Yeah. And the volcano is one of the most active volcanoes in the world, resulting in like... No turtles? Yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> they found... <laughs> They found one female in 2019, which, mm. and then they also found tracks for other tortoises on the island. They were like, yes, okay. this is good. Yeah. They found a female, and then since then, they've been searching, dude. They had like eight, the article I read said they were like the best tortoise hunters in the world. They went out there, searched like 25 square miles of like inhabited, yeah, basically like places where turtles could live. Yeah. No signs of turtles, no turtles. Uh, I mean, just stone because they're huge, right? <laughs> I can imagine not finding the indigos, but Jesus Christ, yeah, dude, that'd be tough. Because I mean, the signs are obvious, you know. Yeah. So they haven't found any signs of them. Haven't found any males, which is what they were looking for. Haven't found any because they females kept either. the female in captivity, right? Yeah, her name is uh, Fernanda. Cause she's a Fernan Fernandino tortoise. Fernandina. Yeah. So um, that sucks, dude. No tortoises, no signs of tortoises. That's it. That's all my notes. That's everything I had in this notebook. <laughs> we just read it all, so it's your turn to say something now. I was out of town this weekend, so we didn't really plan anything. Um, let's talk about the reptile stock market. Okay. Do reptiles run the stock market? Or are reptile prices <laughs> just going up? I guess I guess some people would argue for both. Like, I think you didn't you say you know someone that thinks like yeah the government I, is reptilians or I something? know a couple people, but yeah, yeah. So you could say reptiles run the stock market if you believe that. I don't believe that. I mean, I think that Heidi Klum is a robot, and I think who else is a robot? That one guy that was on The Bachelor this season is also a robot. Why is he a robot? Tell me why you think that. Why is have you seen it? No, I don't okay, know who Heidi you know, whoever is either. All right, well, I guess we can get into it, dude. If um, you guys know, she's, uh, I think she's like, she's like a fashion designer. Heidi Klum, bro. She's a robot. Yeah, pull up a picture. I might, I might like recognize her. Absolutely have no idea who that is. Oh my God. What the heck? And then she literally, she literally is as a robot. <laughs> I'm not, dude, this is, <laughs> this wasn't even planned. That's a picture of her dressed like a robot. Yeah. It's like red and purple. Is is her is her being a robot? Is that something a lot of people think? I mean, I would imagine, but you don't know anyone else. You just decided on your own. It, I came to this. I came to this conclusion on my own. Okay, give me the details. Why? It was a while ago when I came to the conclusion. So I can't. I can't remember exactly why. You don't remember why? But I don't think that that robots run the stock market, and I don't think that reptiles run the stock market. Would you argue against me? No, I agree. I don't think they do. I don't think they do. So we've come to the conclusion that reptiles don't run the stock market on our own. What I meant, obviously jokingly, but what I meant was 
reptile prices. I know everything is going up, especially like gas and stuff. Oh, dude. What? You want to complain about gas prices? No, I want like to say uh, I like to raise the prices on geckos. That, we can. <laughs> I mean, literally, like, uh, it's it's weird to think about, but how many people have anery pictus geckos? Three, maybe. Three, maybe. <laughs> I think, dude, I can't find anybody else. So if you raise the price... And that's what and, that's what and these other two guys yeah. run out. They're only gonna have, they're gonna have to buy from you, or they're just gonna raise their prices. Hundred percent. Yeah. So it's, when when I first when I first saw them, they were like fifty bucks. Mm -hmm. Like that's, I wouldn't sell like I wouldn't sell anything for fifty bucks. Like, yeah. I feel like um, I don't know. To me, it's like also like how cheap can a gecko be before it's worthless? Like. I mean, that kind of contradicts itself in the statement, but like, if you're going to sell it, dude, I've, this is a different topic. I've seen geckos at the reptile shows for $10. Absolutely. I've seen them for cheaper. And I think that's like, that's unfair. What do you, what do you, what do you think about that? I think that it's like kind of. I think it's bad business. Yeah. Um, when you do that, it's, 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 it's someone just trying to sell something, but it gets in people's minds. Oh, X animal should be worth ten dollars, and so if they and then they're not gonna be able, no one else is gonna be able to sell it for twenty dollars because people think it's worth ten dollars. And also, like, who is buying ten dollar geckos? The first reptile expo I went to, I had like thirty dollars, so right. I was literally looking for shit that was super cheap. People who don't know how to take care of stuff. One hundred percent. That's where. That's why I'm like. That's why I kind of. Don't sell geckos dirt cheap even when they are like or should be, you know? Yeah. Cause it's it's um you have to want the animal. I don't know. I'm not gonna sell an animal to somebody that doesn't want it. Yeah. And is not willing to pay pay for what they want, you know? Because if you if you're not gonna if you can't pay for the animal, how are you gonna pay for food? How are you gonna set up the enclosure worth a hundred bucks? Like Yeah. I literally had this one guy and we, we were gonna hang out that day. Mm -hmm. And he wanted to meet close to your house. So I kind of got the feeling he was going to flake or something. So I was like, yeah, I'll bring it in. I can go to Trent's house after. And I'm on the way there. And it must have been a $30 like leopard gecko or something like that. And he, and he texts me. He goes, can I give you like $27 and 40 whatever cents? That's he's, what like, I'm he's like, I have to get gas to get there. And I'm like, I'm like, if you have, if you can't afford a $30 gecko, I know you can't afford to feed it. Right. And I was like, I'm not selling it to you. I'm just going to go to my friend's house. And then I just brought the gecko to your house. Yeah. So I think that's kind of, that's kind of my problem with seeing like dirt cheap geckos at the shows. It's like, it, it really hurts my feelings for the gecko and also the person that's going to get it because like, it's going to be a little kid whose mom is searching for the cheapest animal or like they want a leopard gecko and then... Yeah, like you said, they Their want parents to don't care. Yeah, right. So and think. then if it dies, it's only ten dollars. Like you're not losing out. It's not a big deal if you don't take it to the fucking vet or yeah, uh, yeah. So that I always sell geckos like at least fifty dollars. My starting price is fifty bucks, but usually you go like a hundred. Um, if it's like pet only or some shit like that, usually I'll go a little bit less than a hundred, but. Yeah, I sell. I usually sell my pet only stuff as a hundred. Um, if it's like a black knight with like a bed king, it's only right. like a hundred. Yeah, I and mean, um, if it's a crested gecko with a deformity, I sell it for fifty. Right. So, so that's a good intro to the stock market, the gecko market. So, I remember when I bought my first crested gecko, spent seventy five dollars. Second gecko, I bought. I spent maybe two hundred dollars, and then um. Now you can go online and you can buy a fucking crusty gecko for thirty thousand dollars. Isn't that fucking crazy? Because so many more people keep crusty geckos now. Right. There's like expensive morphs in them. Yeah. Yeah. So that's when I when I first started getting into geckos too. I was like, there's so many gecko breeders. What what am I bringing to the table mm -hmm. that is going to be? There were people making videos about how they thought crusty geckos were going to be the next like feeder gecko because they were so easy. And I was like, really? I was like, but they're so cool. Yeah. And then, of course, the Lily White comes out. Now there's Exanthic. And now there's Melanistic, Leucistic, all these other ones in, like, Korea or wherever. Oh, for sure. Yeah. yeah I've seen... Um, Cappuccinos. I've seen some really cool ones, dude. Yeah. You see the blue ones? 
I think so. We should talk about that on one of the episodes. We haven't talked yeah. about those yet. And yeah. I'm sure a lot of people still don't know about them. Yeah. Um. Yeah. So in the, uh, that happened in the last like four or five years. Yeah. Yeah. Because people are just just this year or last year made lily white xanthics mm-hmm. and because uh, the xanthics is a, a recessive so it's taken a couple of years like they just did it and a lot of things are moving uh to higher prices right as opposed to like usually stuff falls uh-huh. um as more people get it but like like you said the crest of geckos so are you're seeing more an expensive. upward trend in like every gecko price or what damn near yeah yeah because i feel like when five years ago when i was getting into leopard geckos a lot of stuff you get almost anything for two hundred dollars. Mm-hmm. Now, of course, black knights are kind of their own thing, but like, like we were talking about Diablo Blancos earlier. You know, you don't find them for less than three hundred. And raptors, you know, a hundred bucks. Right. I used to be able to find them for like thirty dollars. You know. Yeah, for sure. So I, I think um, when I got into get, breeding geckos and had hatching out leopard geckos, I realized that I had like quality genetics, and I mean, some other people didn't. Yeah. And when you are like a father to your gecko rather than like gecko father. Yeah. What, rather than someone who is like, like coming into the warehouse once a week and then also taking credit for the gecko. Yeah. It's different because you, you know, the individual animal, you spent time with the animal. You're going to miss it, dude. It has, act- <laughs> it has more value to you. That's how I yeah. feel about my animals is they're valuable to me. Yeah. Oh yeah. So like, how do I, yeah, how do I, ad, how do I advertise that? How do I um, sell that to someone else? When I'm selling geckos uh, versus like that other person, I should be able to raise my price. Yeah, I agree. And 100%. I think that if you, if you still want quality animals, you would come to me. Yeah. And I've gotten that. I've, I've had people say that to me at the shows. Be like, "Well, I came, I came, I went around, looked at the other tables, and I came back to you because um, I can tell you care about the animals and shit like that." And then that doesn't even say like. I mean, of course, that makes me look good, but it was like, dude, they made these other people sound so so <laughs> bad. I'm like you couldn't even buy the animals from anybody else here. I was like, wow. Um, and that's really kind of how it is. Like you have to. It's a lot of people that don't give a shit, dude, and that that's what makes me upset about it. There's the a lot of day. people on my list of like I will never buy animals from them. Hundred percent. Just because I've heard so many like people I trust talk shit about them. And then when you're getting it, well, the thing is, when you're getting into animals, you don't know that. Yeah. Or or even like, uh, I don't know. I don't know if you ever heard about this. I forget who it was. It was Ball Pythons 101. I hesitated because I wasn't sure if I could say the name. Did you hear about that? I I remember something about so, that. So it was it was like last year during like this big storm season and like tons of people's power. Yeah. Went out. And he like he like tweeted or Facebooked or something. It was like a it was like he's a like, rant about how he He's like, I'm not gonna your take animals. your animals in if you don't have a backup generator and you didn't prepare for this, you're a horrible person. Right. And no one bought snakes from him for like months. Dude, stop making YouTube videos. I think he, didn't he like delete his Instagram? He, I think he did. Yeah, yeah, he did. And uh, it's stuff like that. Like, like when you say something, especially online, the reptile community is a lot online. When you say something and it shows like you have a bad character, people see that and they just they're gonna assume that that's how you are with your animals. You know, right? Like, you can't be a horrible person and expect everybody to be like, oh, that's okay. That's just who he is and not. How he is with animals. Yeah. Quality geckos should cost more. Yeah, and that's why I sell my animals for like high prices. Yeah. Um, even like, even like, even if I bought an animal and I'm selling it, I'm selling it for more than I bought it for. Oh, 100%. Not only because I want to make money, but because I'm like, it's quality care, you know? And I'm, it's still valuable to me. Like, well, I'm not, I'm not, um, I'm not putting prices out that are like unreasonable unless it's an animal I don't want to sell. Yeah. Yeah. And I think, I think even if you bought an animal, you're, you're bringing value to that. Like for one, whenever you sell the animal, it's potentially bigger. Yeah. Which adds value to pretty much anything because it's closer to being breeding size. Um, And two, I think, like people like you and me who are so deep in the hobby and we're on all the social media, 
we get a lot of those really good deals where we can oh, buy something sure. at a good price and then sell it at an average price. Oh, dude. You know what I mean? I think about, I thought about this yesterday. We were at the, what, what show? I think it was Fresno show or something like that. And ZooMed guy had like six spotted turtles. And he said 150 bucks for all of them. Really? Yeah. And then it was uh, Cody's Day Geckos said he was going to buy them. And yeah. so I, I let him, I was like, all right. So then I ended up coming back at the end of the show. Cody didn't buy them and then he sold them all. And I was like, <sighs> I was so sad, dude. Because I, I know I, those are my, like, one of my favorite species besides the Eastern Box Turtles. Yeah. It's spotted turtles. So I would have. I would have been so happy to have yeah, them six at the of same them. time. Sold each one for 150 bucks. Like, yeah, going and price. I get, I get a lot of offers like that. Right. Like I, I don't want to just keep adding stuff, but like, I've had people offer me like, I have all these Kenyan Samboas. Take my whole collection for like, less than a grand. Right. And, and like then it goes back to the bottom. Females. You can't sell the animals for dirt cheap because people are gonna just take it and fucking be like like it's it's worthless to them you know yeah. you, you have to sell it for a uh, a reasonable price because you want people to take care of the animals it's a live it's 100%. like life dude yeah. it's a whole it's a whole living thing so it's not like it's not like a t-shirt where you can put a sale out let them go for a dollar a pop and then fucking it sits in, i don't know it's say, you have we, to we go bought shirts for a dollar you know yeah. yeah one thing i always talk about is people people view reptiles as like this thing that's like so disposable and i'm like you're not you're not selling t-shirts to go back to your t-shirts you can't produce a bunch and they just sit on the shelf until you sell them like they're living animals you keep feeding them they get bigger like i know this one person she wanted to breed breed corn snakes and she's always been kind of in the hobby right she bought the first year she bought 27 baby corn snakes and she and they're they're breeding this year she's getting eggs and of course, a lot of them are gonna be bad, but she's gonna have so many babies. It's insane. And she got like crypto or some kind of disease, and she had all these snakes, and she had no idea what to do because she had just got all these snakes. And they like, I think like half of them got it or something like that. It was insane. It's a low, it's a low barrier entry hobby. Oh, for sure. But it's like you can get in for fifty dollars, but you can't be successful. That yeah way, you know um yeah there's a lot of people i, I i've seen who want to just throw money at it and they don't want to like watch videos read talk to people they want to throw money at it and then they have tens of thousands of dollars in snakes and they get out of it a couple years later because they don't know what the fuck they're doing and they're like snakes are dying or snakes aren't eating and they're having all this trouble and if they would have just you know talked to some people watched some videos or bought less animals in the or beginning. bought less animals so it wasn't as big of a like load when something happened right. you know yeah there's a lot of people who start with way too many or they get excited and they just start buying so much at once and to go from zero to a hundred is not not really possible mm -hmm. in the hobby yeah it's um yeah well because because at zero what do you what do you do you buy what like Trump or albino, old stripe, rainwater. Now you have three geckos, yeah, all different genes. So you're sick, and then you breed them, and then you've got pet only, pet only, pet only, like which is pretty much how I Max started. Snow. You know, <laughs> yeah, yeah. So then you start over, fucking buy males for all your females, buy females. And for everyone your does this too. I, everyone I've talked to, they they get a bunch of stuff. They, they breed them for a year or two and they go, oh, people ask me what it is and I and I tell them and they then they find out it's not that and right. now I have to sell my breeders and yeah, that's a lot of people get out of it right there. Uh-huh. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I remember second or third year, I was like, what the hell do I do with all these females that I like? I had like four I don't females. know the genetics. Yeah, and like six males for some reason. Yeah. <laughs> So I finally, I posted them all. I was honest, I posted them all on my website. Someone came and bought all of them once. Saved my life, you fucking let me buy more animals and then reinvest right before the season. So I was like, yeah, I just, just, uh, just, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know what is the best advice for someone that is, is buying geckos and wants to become a breeder, but 
Oh, because they're not gonna know they don't know at all. I mean, maybe 100%. they will. Yeah, they don't like, know that they don't know. That's the problem. If you, I thought I knew. Yeah, yeah. I was like, this is gonna be cool. And I meet other people who think, who actually read and think they know. And then when I hear what they know compared to like what we know I've from been what to we've the done, shows, yeah. And I've seen people put like seventy-five percent rainwater. So, so it's like, Pause, head, blood, like yeah, stupid stuff. And I'm like, and these are they're are, they're big breeders doing that shit. Yeah, people that have been around and have sold geckos to people that I know. Yeah, and there's some stuff that like not not no one's a hundred percent sure how it works, like white and yellow. Right. But all these other genes, we know how they work. They work and in like only be, a handful yeah. of ways, and we can do the math on all those, and we can almost guarantee everything. Hundred percent. You know. That reminds me. That's a topic we should talk about later. What? Um, you know this. You know the people who uh, you can send them a snake skin and they can tell you like the sex. No. Oh, well, they're doing a lot more now. We should talk about that in a future. No, episode. tell me right now. What is it? So, so there's a couple companies. And I don't know the name, but there are certain species like colubrids, like corn snakes and ball pythons, and you can send them a shed for like fifteen dollars, and they'll tell you what sex Ooh. it is. I forget. I'll send I'll send you a link and you can post it in the right. description. Um and and recently I always wanted them to add crested geckos, they never do it. I've sent them emails about it. I'm like, because if you could sex a crested gecko as a baby if you catch the shed, how <laughs> crazy. Great, uh, like yeah. a head exanthic, you could figure out if it's a boy or a girl right out the egg. That'd be 100%. crazy. Um imagine if you could test the egg. Anyway, <laughs> anyway, they they are figuring out how to test like Pos het animals, and they can tell you out of a litter where one in three is het. I've heard of this. They can tell you which ones are het and which ones aren't through like DNA sequence. One hundred percent. And it's 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 cheap to do if you have a couple of snakes and you don't you don't know what sex they are. It's literally like fifteen dollars. Right. My Glenn, so, Glenn did this so my understanding from what I've heard is that you can send. I don't know what you would send, but you send something. And they will tell you what the genetics of your animal are. Yeah. So it's only certain species. I know I'm guaranteed ball pythons the first one because that's where the money is. Right. But I know a lot. They work with a lot of species now. Like you can go to the website and it'll be like ball pythons, corn snakes, rat snakes. Blah, so blah, it's, almost like, it's almost like it's like a 23 and me, but for your gecko. That's exactly what it's like. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, Snake Discovery did a video on it recently. Oh, for sure. But... They, I've know, I've known that they can do the sexing thing for like, it's been years. It's been since I've worked at Glenn. I, I didn't know that. Yeah, so Glenn, Glenn would get all his like expensive snakes and have them like professionally sexed for fifteen dollars, so he can sell females for more. You know, right? Because because fifteen dollars, but if you can guarantee it's a female through genetic sequencing, you can sell it for a couple hundred dollars more potentially. Because there's like stores that offer it, and I don't trust them. Oh, and right. honestly, first off, I don't trust them touching my snake. Oh, because yeah. the employees, I've met a lot of the employees at these stores, and they don't know what the fuck they're doing. Yeah. I would never trust them with my animals. I think it would be, I mean, it's honestly Plus like, they have mites. If you want to have your snake probed, we'll figure out how to do it yourself. Yeah, find a <laughs> snake breeder in your area. Yeah, don't go to, don't go to the I don't trust shop. the stores. I'm sure a lot of people do it and they're fine. The thing about the reptile shops, bro, it's just... It's just someone like you that's working there. They're not experts. They don't know more yeah. than you. They they're just, just a person with a job. Yeah, so it's like... They might not even not, have reptiles. They can't give you, like, the best. Don't take their advice. Just don't. Like, don't take their advice unless they have an animal. You know they have it. Maybe, like, take and it into consideration, but don't let that be, like, the end-all, be-all. Like, oh, they yeah. said this. No, I get too many. I get too many people at work. That's like, oh, the person at this store said this, and I'm like, well, we all breed here. We're yeah, see, all the issue like is just I I know those people that work there outside of that place. Yeah. So it's like they're just not. They're not. Yeah, we're all friends on Facebook. Right. We're all reptile we're just not people. experts. You know, we're all just in the same boat. Yeah, so they keep like, like two of the species they told you about. I'm not. I'm not talking shit about them. I I think they're. I think they're all dope as fuck. We're all yeah, friends, so we but I'm, I'm just saying like, this stuff, but like, don't go in there expecting them to be like, uh, fucking you you eucalyptus tree of fucking information. 
it's uh, like encyclopedia yeah of like, fucking reptile information like people i only have like eight adult corn snakes or something like that but if people ask me questions i don't like answering it because i know i don't know that much I sure. really only feel confident answering questions about lever geckos and crested geckos. Yeah. And I still don't know that much. 100%. I haven't even done them for, you know, a handful of years. I can count um, my hand. So far, dude, I get a lot of questions about leopard gecko morphs. Yeah. And what is my leopard gecko? Yeah. So, pretend so right much. now I have a gecko in my hand. What morph is it? invisible and how would you be able to tell that like what are you looking for when you Visual see your gecko features. and then how what does that mean because i want to kind of if you're watching this and you have a gecko and you want to know what it is how can we help them so we're looking at color and yeah that's the first thing you're gonna see is the color of the gecko yeah and and a lot of people say eyes and people are gonna look at their gecko's eyes and be like oh they don't look like i think they would it must be something special <laughs> And I don't want to get that off because there's only like two morphs that affect the eyes. Right. But the number one thing I do when I'm unsure of a morph of like a snake or something like that is I go to morph market. Yeah, for sure. And I go, what looks like my snake? You know what I mean? 100%. I, I, think I have it's, a general idea. Usually. I think it's a little bit harder with leopard geckos though. Yeah. Because sometimes the, the chocolate trempers look just like the bells. Absolutely. So I think and the rainwaters and the trempers look the same. Hundred percent. Like and sometimes if, even the bells you can't tell. If you have a gecko in your hand and it's black and yellow, like ninety nine percent chance it's normal. Yeah, and even if it's anything else, <laughs> like it's still a normal. Like Halloween masks are just normals. Yeah, bold stripes are normals. Bold Halloween are masks normals. are normals. Duggles are basically just normals. So everything that's black, yellow, green is normal. Is it black, yellow, green. Yeah, sometimes they're green, right? Leopard geckos? Yeah. No. Dude. You're telling me should a leopard we, gecko has green? no green on it? You're telling me they're strictly black and yellow? Black, yellow, white. Dude, there's a little bit of green there. <laughs> click, on, click on a picture. Absolutely. Oh, there's gray. Definitely some gray. Okay, we can argue whether leopard geckos have a little bit of green or not. I'm not going to argue because there's absolutely no green. But Dude, there is. Look at this. You're going to tell me this isn't green? I mean, you can see the eyeballs coming through the head. It's kind of bluey. Okay, everybody, I'll put the picture on. You can tell me if it's green or fucking not. Like, that matters in the first place. Jesus Christ, James. Sometimes you just make me upset for no reason. That's all right. Green, uh, army green leopard geckos. You know about that morph? Um, and about emmerines. So, army green is... So there are green fucking leopard geckos. Kinda. Yeah, yeah. and you're tripping on me for no reason. Dude, gotta be tripping. That's what I'm saying. Did we do our ad? Uh, no. Did you wanna do the ad? I'll just do it later. <laughs> All right, what else? Leopard geckos are green. That's it. See you guys next time. Welcome back. I'm here still. James is no longer here. Apologize that the conversation was cut short. I would really appreciate it if you guys keep watching the show. I love you all. To the death of me, I will keep doing this show. Um, and I will work my ass off to provide you guys with more facts, stuff you want to hear. And I, I would love it if you guys watch the episodes with me. Give me your feedback. Like, I think we've been doing mostly news segments last week and this week. Um, if you like those, let me know. If you want me to talk about something else, let me know. I'll be back next week with a new episode. That's going to be great. And you're going to like it. And you have two choices. We could do the history of reptile keeping or we could do how to tell the phenotype of your leopard gecko. What do you think? So, I mean, I know that people used to keep alligators in like ancient Egypt in like tombs and maybe breed them back then. 
So we'll start there and then talk about things that happened after that. Or if you have a gecko in your hand and you're looking at it and you want to tell someone what it is, I can help you with that. Because um, what you want to know technically is what is the gene. But what I can tell you is what is the fiend, the phenotype, not the genotype. So those are your options. What do you want to hear? I'll comment it. I won't comment it, but you will. And then I'll tell you what it is next week. We'll do a deep dive into it. Thank you guys for watching very much. Thank you guys for watching. I really appreciate it. If you guys could like and subscribe, that would make my heart beat faster. And I would, if you guys like and subscribe, I will, I will eat one of these bites. If I get, if I get, what is it? Three? Three subscribers by the time I post my next episode you'll eat, you'll see me eat one of these bites and I think that they're even expired so maybe I'll get sick and I'm willing to do that because I want you guys to watch a show and I want you guys to enjoy it huh who else is gonna sacrifice their own health for a, a show besides like Nick Avocado or I don't I don't even know who else is like doing stuff like me that's what I'm saying I'm in like the one percent of youtubers at this point so stay tuned you're gonna love it thanks for watching the show i appreciate you i love you and i want you to watch the show again so of course i'm gonna have facts when i come in here i'm of course i'm gonna have something to talk about when i come in here i'm gonna tell you a freaking joke next week don't think i won't but at the same time like how much stuff is there to talk about when it comes to reptiles that's what i've been doing news stories because i'm like what do you guys not know what that's a good question what the fuck do you guys not know what do you want to know Cause I know what I know everything. I'll just tell you right now, I know everything. I'm fucking a genius. So anything you want to know, cause the thing is I could just Google it and I can just tell you between now and then. So whatever you want to know, comment it, tell me what you want to know, pick one of the two options I listed or fucking something else totally off topic. And I'll get there, dude. We'll do some deep dives. We'll do some fucking have some good information and some silly jokes. I love you. I want you to I want you to watch and I want you to tell your friends about the show. Tell your mom about the show. Tell your dad. Get your get your dog to watch it whenever he's chilling, you know. Sometimes I'll put on sometimes I'll put on YouTube for my animals. This would be a good episode for you to put on for your cat. And you can just let it play over and over again and then uh like it, make him like it too and comment. And then subscribe. That's also, it's, I think that's the most important one is that you subscribe. It's, it's free. You don't have to pay me anything. You just click a button. So I'll wait for you to click the button right now. Go click it. It's, um, I think if you're watching this, you can click the, this, there's like a minimize button over in this corner and then you can click on my name, which is like over here or something. And then, and then you sub there's the bell. That's you found it. That's right there. So once you click on that, now we're friends. Um, that means that you like me and I like you. And now we can have a cool friendship and be YouTube friends. Hey, welcome. Hey, we're at the end of the show, and there's nothing left to talk about. Besides one thing, the Central Valley Reptile Expo. Did you guys know that on June 4th and 5th, there's a reptile show in, in June in Fresno? Some dude, pretty soon, you know, I think next week, you guys are going to be shocked because I'm going to have a... I'm gonna have a whole different ad. It's gonna be, I'm gonna redo it. I'm gonna say everything backwards next week. God damn it. I know you guys just heard this. Just stick with me. Just, just stick with me. Central Valley Reptile Expo, June 4th and 5th. Be there or be fucking square. Venomous snakes. Not for sale, but for show. So that's it cue the song
Again. It's Rev Talk. It's Rev Talk. The podcast. So I did the drums for this song, if you didn't know. I'm the drummer on, on the song. Did you like it? Because then I could maybe I'll be in a drum I'll be in a drummer in a band. I was thinking it's actually pretty good. So if you like if you like the drums, freaking comment. Dude. All right, see you guys later. Thanks for watching. Sorry this happened to everybody.